Hey, yeah. Can you hear me? You all right? Yes, I can. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. All good. I think that's like one of the first times it's worked straight away. Normally, it's like, yeah. Yeah. normally there's a problem with audio or something, so it's kind of good that it's working straight away. Yes. So, um, yeah, just to start off with a bit of info. So, um, In Conversation has been set up um, as a chance um, to, yeah, explore the work of uh, types of creatives, like photographers, models, stylists, makeup artists, all that sort of stuff. And it's a chance for you guys to sort of, yeah, as I say, like talk about your work, go into some depth about it and just explain how you created some of the amazing images that we've got. Um, so we've got about four images to talk through, but I think I'll just, I'll start kind of at the start as I normally do. Um, just give us a, a bit of information about your background, really, sort of where are you from? Yeah, so originally I'm from Estonia, yeah. but I have kind of like Russian background. So it's in my passport, I'm Estonian, but I'd say my mentality is Russian. Mm -hmm. And uh, after graduation, I, well, I started like my photography in Estonia, but it was more like, you know, playing with first DSLR that my family got. Mm -hmm. I think I was like around maybe 10 and just, it was just like, you know, crazy weird selfies. <laughs> and um, then slowly by the end of school, I started to shoot my friends. And after graduation, I moved to Germany, to Berlin, where I was studying. And it's there where I started to do photography commercially, but it was mostly something like uh, portrait sessions, family sessions, love story. So nothing to do with fashion really. And then in five years, and basically five years ago, I moved to the UK, to Sheffield. And it's where I actually started my fashion and beauty photography career. <laughs> mm -hmm. what, what was it that kind of brought you to the UK? Was it photography? Um, mostly, yeah, photography, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I moved, like, people always, like, ask after Berlin, Sheffield, <laughs> how come? So basically, it's just um, my husband got a job in Sheffield. And by that time, I only graduated from the university. And obviously, I had no job. So I was like, hey, I'm coming. <laughs> you have a job, I don't. So I, yeah, I'm just coming. And yeah, I started to do photography there. Um, it was quite difficult because um, I understood that... In the UK, there is no such trend on personal photo shoots, really. People do have photographers, but for occasions only, like wedding, I don't know, newborn, maybe Christmas sessions, yes. But nothing like, you know, a nice, beautiful girl wants to update her Facebook like profile image. And yeah, I, I, I realized that it's quite difficult to get paid shootings there in, in this, like, in this, uh, not this industry, in this style, in this direction. So, yeah, and I decided to, that's when I decided to switch to kind of like modeling tests, because it is basically what I want to do, capture nice women, but they actually need portfolio. So it was like, you know, win-win. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, I was actually going to kind of, yeah, delve into that a bit later as well, talk about the kind of, because I've noticed that with the the sort of your style and sort of how it's progressed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go into that. But I think, um, what, how do you find the the fashion of photography scene in like Sheffield and around and like in the UK? How are you finding it? Uh, well, in Sheffield probably doesn't really work because it's such like a, a, an industri industrial city. They're like, still city so it was a bit difficult to do something there so I started to target more Leeds and Manchester so especially Manchester most of my time I spent there so Manchester is good for fashion yes Sheffield probably not but yeah. maybe it's, it, it is like a, an opportunity because I'm pretty sure there are fashion brands as well and probably they need photographers but it wasn't that easy to get like an exposure in Sheffield. <laughs> mm -hmm. And obviously now, like after moving to London, I am now based in London. It is obviously just probably the, the best place in the UK for fashion photographer, I'd say. Yeah. Lots of opportunities, lots of like options. So it's just it's just the right market here. Yeah. So yeah, so, so you're based in London now. Yes, yeah. And um yeah, I think I think like you said, I think you mentioned. Because yeah, I'm in I'm in Manchester, and I think um, yeah. it's in in the UK. I think yeah, obviously kind of like the Londons, it's all going on there. But I think then I think Manchester and Liverpool and some places like that that 
<laughs> I mean, I know a lot of kind of brands and everything are kind of branching out into places like Manchester to send people off for shoots or places like that because it tends to be a bit cheaper with hiring places and all that sort of stuff as well. Yeah, that's true. But, um, uh, how do you, yeah, how do you find London then? Um, it's really cool, but maybe again, it's slightly more difficult than I expected. Although it's obviously a wider market in terms of opportunities, but at the same time, the competition is way, way, way higher than in Sheffield. So for example, like I managed to rank uh, like number one for fashion photography in Sheffield. And in London, I think it will not take months, but probably years till I get to first page, hopefully, but it, it is a bit, difficult but it's also quite interesting because here are so many creatives and many creatives that I've um, been following for quite a long time they were either located in London or around so now I actually have an opportunity to finally work with them or at least get in touch and you know like let's go for a couple <laughs> just to have a chat because previously obviously it's not that comfy to travel from from Sheffield to London all the time quite pricey and takes like hours yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, there, yeah. there are like, pros and cons obviously. yeah I suppose like the big one is that like say it kind of opens up a lot there are a lot of people especially from like Krebs, like, in London and it kind of gives you that chance you're kind of there in the heart of it then and yeah it gives you that chance to sort of yeah there's a lot of travel time and costs and you can yeah. do you yeah. find yourself booking in like sort of just kind of shooting like even if it's like your own stuff as well do you find that it kind of gives you that chance to do that a bit more there as well because the people and the places are available mm -hmm. Uh, kind of yes yeah yeah it's always like you know difficult to start when although I'm still within the same country but it is kind of different location so I'd say I am starting from kind of scratch <laughs> because all my previous clients were mostly located in Sheffield or Manchester or around and obviously now they don't really want to travel here for the same reasons why I didn't travel to London that much so yeah now I just need to build my client base again so a, a bit stressful but it's also quite interesting because now i kind of know what to do in sheffield i didn't really know because i only started fashion photography and now i have that experience and i probably know what people are looking for what i want to do so hopefully it, it won't be that long <laughs> no like i say i think it's it's different to how it was when you're in sheffield and like I say you've You've got all that experience behind you now and all that time and um although like I say a lot of kind of clients or whatever might be kind of sheffield based but you've kind of got yourself out there and you're, you're kind of a, a bit more known as you would have been compared to starting in sheffield so you've got those kind of stepping stones and everything but um no it, it sounds like it's going well so it's good it's good signs yeah hopefully <laughs> yeah um yeah. yes so we'll go into the first image actually um yeah. uh so this was i was going yeah we're talking about the I wanted to kind of just introduce, go straight into the, the cover image that we had. Um, uh, so yeah, um, it's it's a, a really strong image and I, I just wanted to ask about what the the kind of idea and the inspo was behind it really. Yeah, so when we discussed this shooting, we didn't have any idea at all at first, but then the uh, makeup and hair artist said that he has some specific like hairstyle in his mind. He tried to source like approximate image of what he wants to do, but he did manage to find like the perfect example. Mm -hmm. But I kind of had a feeling that it looks something like disco styled. So, yeah. and after that, I decided, okay, I need to look for maybe disco styled references in terms of lighting. I didn't know what I want to do in terms of the shoot, the shot exactly, but I knew what I want to do with the lighting. So I want to have this kind of like, um red ish uh like color and maybe slightly like smooth smudged a bit so yeah and then when when the shooting happened usually how it happens with me of course i prepare for the shoot i have like mood board i have references but then once all the creatives on the stage everyone like starts to put some input some contribution to what we are going to get and sometimes it changes the like i don't really look into my mood board anymore we just start to do it and i start to play with the lighting and uh, makeup artists hair artists starts to play with like some 
hairstyle or makeup model starts to do some probably weird pose, posing. Yeah, and then it's just, it, it just happens. The image happens. <laughs> so exactly this shot, I didn't have like, in my head that I want to do this shot. It just, it just happened. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but I think it's still, I still managed to get that disco style vibe for the shirt, for the shot. Yeah, this, so, so this shot, um, yeah, because the one we've got is from the kind of side view where she's like slightly looking up. Um, like I say, you, you kind of, I, I know what you mean with that as well, about you, you plan, you kind of get the mood board, but stuff happens and it's also it's it's a i think it's a good way to be as well you don't want to be too rigid of what we've got to get this exact shot yeah you want something so that you want to let it flow as the shoot goes on so with with a shot like that was that something where yeah it's just as you're shooting you, you kind of was like the kind of position was that the model was you directing and, and did it just kind of happen <gasps> probably i slightly directed her but she's so good at what she's doing so i i always encourage everyone like do what you want to do, do what you feel, because we can always uh, look at the screen and see, you know, this doesn't work, so we need to change the plan. But in most cases, when everyone in the team is on like on the same page, it just starts to create some sort of magic. And I was like, oh my goodness, I even didn't think we can do something like this, but it just happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's happening. So yeah, that's 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 something. It, it was like this. And that was, yeah, so um, Nicola Manners is the model. Yeah. Um, and then um, Antonio Cruz was the, did the uh, makeup and hair. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you say like kind of a lot of it from the early stage of it was like uh, Antonio's kind of input with the same like the hair the look that he wanted to create. So was that, you say you kind of built a lot of it around that. Was that the early stage of it? And was a lot of it kind of come from like something that he wanted to create and then you built around mm -hmm. that? Um, it's it started with the uh, with the message from Nicola. She just messaged me saying, "I have an amazing makeup and hair artist. We need to do something together. I'm always up for it." So I was like, "Yes, yes, sure." And then we created a group chat just like to discuss the ideas. And everyone was so busy that we didn't really manage to come up with a proper plan for the shoot. But the shooting date was already agreed. So like. It's like, you know, a few days left. And uh, yeah, suddenly the uh, makeup and hair artist just sends this image. Like, I, I don't know what we're doing, but I just want to do this hairstyle. And like, okay, this will be our starting point. <laughs> and we'll play just around. I'll just come up with ideas based on this hairstyle. So just to make sure, you know, it looks appropriate for the, sh for, for the image in general. So yeah, probably hair was like the starting point here. <laughs> So did he say, um, cause you mentioned about the kind of like the sort of, yeah, the disco vibes and was that something yeah. that was like mentioned between like you and Antonio or did, did you kind of get that after you seen the hair or did he um, mention that? I, um, I think once I got that image like of hairstyle, I just started to look through the different references where I could find the similar hairstyle. It was really hard to find it. And then I just, I don't know, it just pop, popped up in my head, in my head, like this could be something like disco styled. And then I started to look for disco style and I sent the references to guys and everyone was like, yeah, yeah, I like it. We will do it. Let's do it. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, that was kind of one, when the scene, not the image is one of the first things I thought and it was, yeah, very kind of disco, lot kind of like 70s looky and that sort of stuff. And yeah. I think, um, and you can really see it, you say a lot with the lighting as well and that, the um, that sort of purple hair, even just kind of like around the hair and all that kind of glow on it, those kind of like disco lights that you get. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you definitely captured it very well because that was one of the first things I thought. And, <laughs> and I think um, it's just got that kind of, that kind of very like, soft look to it. Was that, was that kind of um, like sort of post editing? Did you pop kind of put like a bit of a, because it's quite sort of soft in it as well. Yeah, so basically I used two lightings, one flashlight in front of the model and the second one was continuous light. Mm -hmm. And it's basically I was shooting with longer shutter speed, <clears throat> and yeah, when when you have two lightings, basically the flashlight freezes what I need to freeze, and the continuous light already. If I move my camera during the uh, during the taking the shot, then it will mm -hmm. just match it. So yeah, that's how I, I got it. 
so that oh that created that slight sort of yeah that yes, was like, yeah, almost yeah. like so a bit of movement yeah yeah so not like post-production it was created all, all on the um on like in the studio straight away nice great thank you um yeah we'll, we'll move on to the second one um the second one i've got was the um it's the pink dress so with the blue sky behind her yeah. um and i've got down for this the modical model model sorry is jessica ashley yes um stylist uh daniela bogan yeah um yes yeah, so uh well first of all where was this where was it shot it was in big district so yeah whilst living in sheffield i yeah, I don't know. It feels like half of my shootings were happening in Peak District. I absolutely love this place. It's really inspiring and yeah, just just really beautiful. But why we decided to go for this place exactly for this shooting? Uh, this shooting was the very first one after first lockdown. So it's it's like it's the first restrictions were lifted, I believe. We still weren't allowed to use makeup artists so that's why we don't have a makeup artist for this shooting uh and yeah it's, it, it was just like me stylist model and yeah we, we we thought that probably studio will not really be a good place for this very moment because of like all the uh, yeah corona and all this stuff so yeah we thought Peak district should be just just right because it's quite spacious <laughs> so no risks and yeah we just picked a random pin in Google Maps, like, let's say, let's, let's go there because all, um, yeah, all the team were from different places. I was from Sheffield, I believe Jessica is from Liverpool. I don't remember where the stylist lived at that time, like, but yeah, we, we just tried to pick the, the pin so that everyone spends pretty much approximately time traveling there yeah. and yeah. Yeah, I think it really worked very well. <laughs> so you say this was like um, uh, kind of early stages of things opening back up a little bit. Yes, yeah, yeah. So we're just like finally we can <laughs> we can shoot. So, yes. Yeah. So did you have was it something you'd been kind of waiting to shoot for a while, or was it things? Were I, open um, well, I I have quite a lot of like <laughs> references uh, in my Pinterest. Something like you know, girl in the field. I feel that I have probably too many shots like this <laughs> but I still like find some like oh I like it and then I realize like it's still again it's girl in the field <laughs> so yeah I just had some random shots but again once we met I just showed my references and then then I just yeah turned off my phone and we started to 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 create <laughs> so yeah we, we just had an idea that it should be something airy flowy filled wind blue sky green grass so yeah so something really soft tender feminine so yeah yeah well I, I think you say like the choice as well to uh to do it outside as opposed to in studio as well and like you just said there it, it goes with it goes with like the outfits and the dress and um it's also like a really you can see that it's a really kind of bright day sunny day um, i think it was the hottest day that summer <laughs> <laughs> we were boiling everyone got sunburned it was just really extremely hot it was super windy mm -hmm. because of like the open space so you can't really feel that you're hot but yeah then we realized that everyone was red <laughs> so how did you can uh how did you control so well, first of all like, you got the wind as well which you can see in the image like kind of yeah. going through a hair which again <laughs> is, is hitting the dress and the hair is not perfect but i think with the light as well how did you such a bright day how did you control that uh, I actually sometimes love to shoot with um, like midday light, uh, mid midday sun. It's really hard to shoot with it. That's why I don't really um, shoot during this time outdoors with unprofessional models, not only professionals, because they know that, for example, if we're shooting facing the sun, your face should be really like straight towards the sun then you don't have any like weird shadows, but mm -hmm. obviously it's really hard to like looking at the sun. So most of the shots with closed eyes <laughs> mm -hmm. or then against the sun and you have this kind of, I don't know, dreamy, dreamy shot probably because it's just a bit soft, mm -hmm. not, not super clear, but yeah, it's, if, if it works with the mood of the shoot, then I think, I think it's really good. 
yeah, so I'm, I'm not really scared of the lighting. If we suddenly got like many clouds, that's fine as well. So we just work around what we have. <laughs> so would you, did you have, because you can see the shot, it's, it's behind her. So yeah, you're saying there about it, um, she's facing away from the sun, so it's going to be a bit soft, but the light's a bit soft. And we, did you have reflect or anything, or was that just pure natural? Uh, probably it was like a couple of clouds. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I did bring my reflector with me, but I don't remember using it, to be honest. So it was either, yeah, I don't remember if we had any trees there. So it, it's just like, you know, turning the model around and see what, what's like light angle works the best. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I think, yeah. I think like you said, sun. yeah, like you say, getting that kind of, from the position to, to that away from the sun and getting that soft a lot, I think it, it kind of works better with the whole feel of it and the look of it. And I think with the dress and everything as well, I think yeah, that kind of soft light, yeah, yeah, definitely works better. Yeah, yeah. And the, the poses like in this image, um, obviously this one like really jumps out like with the, the hands towards the camera and uh, that sort of depth it gives it. Is that, uh, we spoke a little bit in the last one about direct, was that something, did you direct to that or did you just let the model kind of do a thing? Uh, sometimes I do direct like, you know, lean more towards me, stretch your hands towards me. But in most cases, it's just like a collaboration thing and she picks up it straight away and started to starts to like play around this pose. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you still hear me? Because it says my internet connection is weak. Uh, I can, yeah. It keeps jumping a bit, but yeah, okay. it's still fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I think I'm guiding, maybe sometimes guiding too much, but again, it depends really on the model. If I see, if I feel that she doesn't need it, I just step back and just press my button. <laughs> so do you have... Um, with with shoot, shoots in general then do you have a preference when it comes to directing do you prefer um to be quite sort of sort of strict to that and be like oh i know exactly what i'll get or do you prefer to let it flow or somewhere in between um usually i prefer just give them all the offer because i really want to create something and if i if i guide everything probably it will be too boring because I don't have an idea of what the models, the stylist, the makeup artist. So, and whenever it is liberation, I really don't, guys, please everyone, do your contribution. I can help, especially like at the start of the photo shoot, just, you know, to warm up. But then usually I just like, do how you feel it. I can slightly guide you just because of the lighting again, you know, like it doesn't work well, just turn a bit towards me here and then just yeah, continue to do what you were doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I'm, we'll keep kind of like, keep, you keep um, losing a little bit, but it's like, we'll, keep, we'll, 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 we'll persevere, it's fine. Um, uh, in, we shoot in general, yeah, so um, do you have stuff you prefer on shoots? So like certain, Types. I was going to say a lot of music, obviously the location stuff, it's, there's not normally as much music on, maybe it's more studio stuff, but is there certain types of music like we shoot? Is there a certain type of energy or stuff like you, anything you kind of prefer from like the models and the, the, the team, the stylists, makeup artists, anything, anything specific you like? Um, the only thing I really love is when I have a big team. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, I can only be responsible for just doing photography sometimes i even don't really into like art direction because surprisingly enough probably i don't have like that many ideas and i always I, i'm always happy if i have like extra couple of like you know brains there just to come up with ideas maybe to add any detail or just slightly change the makeup because for me it looks beautiful but maybe someone can make it even more beautiful mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah i, I just love the teams that's that's the best thing and then then just yeah then we create amazing results 100 percent well that that's it i think i think like you say i think the the point of having a team and everyone on there for specific stuff but it does there, there is a big difference between um with having sort of people there with your other members of the team like they can bring stuff that again that you kind of you might not think about it can be a lot kind of going on and you're kind of just trying to focus on one thing and they can help sort of Bring something yeah. to light that you might not kind of think of at the time, so it definitely does help. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Because, but for example, like when I'm shooting, I'm most of the model 
not at her makeup, not at her hairstyle or how the clothes look, um, but just just thought. And then the stylist can say, oh, there is actually a crease. We just need to like, you know, iron this or, or artists like, oh, I can see something is smart. And I just miss it. But then on post-production, when I um, sit like back at my laptop and like, oh my goodness, we, we should have fixed that because now I have to edit it. Yeah. So yeah, and when you have more eyes there, then you can just make the raw files look as perfect as only possible. Yeah. And then the post-production is a quick and everyone is happy because they got like, you know, their shots in like a few days. <laughs> so. Well, I, I think that's what kind of helps. Really it helps stand out as well when you get, if it's a, a stylist or makeup artist or some other member of the team, if they do that, um, you do notice, you notice the good ones who do that and you notice that it, it, it kind of does make the difference afterwards when you look and you go, oh yes, so-and-so did that, point that out. Or if you do a shoot, if that is missed quite often, it, it does become noticeable. So yeah, I think it does, it does help bring out people yeah, who are doing their job, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, moving to the third image. Um, so that's gonna be the, uh, the image, the girl sat down, she's got the sort of um, brown jumper on. I think this was uh, featured in Elegant magazine. I think I've seen. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, so, uh, yeah, so when, when and where was this? Um, I can't tell you for sure when was that, but I believe it should be either 2019. I, I believe it should be 2019, maybe 2020. Can't, can't remember for sure. But uh, what I remember is that this shooting was done in Estonia, my home country. So, and basically whenever I travel back home, I always try to organize at least one collaboration with local creatives, because I still like have lots of connections there. And from time to time, Instagram suggests me to follow some other creatives. And yeah, it's just interesting to in different countries because Ooh, they are slightly good. different in different countries. Yeah, I think, oh, we, I think we keep losing you a little bit. Um, I think oh. it's just, yeah. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's okay. Cool. Yeah, that, that's all right. Yeah, carry on. That's all right. It just keeps cutting out a little bit. Okay, so yeah, I don't know what, what did you hear. So, but basically, yeah, we uh, shooting in Estonia with creatives and We done this shoot in advance. In most cases, it's when I'm back home, I'm like, okay, I need to do something. And then I like quickly start to not Google, but probably like looking on Instagram for some creatives, for like some like local creatives, uh, contacting different modeling agencies and just see what I can get. So with any like specific year even, but just like, you know, here's my portfolio. I want to create Pro probably like I have like, kind of vibe for the shoot i might attach like one two images just to sort out the people you know maybe if it's not like their style but yeah and then once i have team then we start to th then we have like one day left <laughs> mm -hmm. and we start to come up with different references and in most cases all the shootings i do in estonia are outdoors mm -hmm. first of all because mostly it is in summer it's summer and uh, secondly, just because I don't have time to arrange like a studio or anything like this and outdoors, obviously, it's, like you have a lot of sand. Since I'm from Tallinn, which is on seaside, I love sea. So I always bring the whole team, like let's shoot by the sea. Everyone is like really tired of it. It's like in Sheffield, girl in the field, everyone's like, again. <laughs> <laughs> so the same, the same in Tallinn, like again by the sea, but I love it so much. So I'm like, even there is no sea on the background, we are there. We are like on seaside. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, I mean, it makes for a really nice location. And you can see it in the images as well. And then um, I think you can kind of see as well, yeah, with that, the kind of light that it gives as well. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, so you mentioned about like a team as well um, as a starting point so that is that kind of that's one of the big things like when you plan the shoot the, the team is the big thing really yes absolutely 100 team team is everything 
it's yeah it's I didn't know about this but it's only when I first in my life I think it wasn't actually in Sheffield when I organized a shooting with a proper professional makeup artist and with a proper model with a proper stylist and I realized just that just in this one shooting my portfolio just like improved so much like mm -hmm. like it was like you know two different people and I'm like oh my goodness it's team it's when you have team the quality just rises dramatically so I always encourage now all the photographers who only start or who who haven't worked with like teams yet just find people work together even like on the same on the beginning level it would be so 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 different so different and yeah it's it's exactly the point where you just press the button you literally just press the button because everything is working together so well and you don't have to think about all the things that you don't think as a photographer. So team is 100% a must. Uh, yeah, what I, what I did want to ask is just one more thing on that last image. Um, so yeah, this was this was featured in the, the magazine, um, in Elegant Magazine. So with, with, with magazines, is that something, do you, do you submit to magazines a lot? Is that when you're do, creating images, is that something kind of, you're aiming for what for features really not really it's first when i started with fashion photography i was more like oh my goodness it would be so cool to be featured in magazine but i had some probably not correct idea of how it actually works sometimes i was just thinking like it's just unreal it's not possible like how can you get featured there but um uh, yeah and then i just just realized that actually it is possible <laughs> you can do it so and i found a uh, website called caviar i think it's called oh yeah i'm so so yeah and i was like oh my goodness <laughs> and actually yeah when um when i was doing any like collaboration i thought like exposure and yeah, twelve. So yeah. at some point I stopped doing this, but yeah, now now I pick up again. <laughs> so and now I start to submit again. Yeah. So because now I can see there are way more magazines than it was before, and um, yeah, previously at least in, on that website, not that many not that many magazines were really uh interesting for me in terms of like styling mm -hmm. meaning that i just felt that probably my shoes won't look good there and i had exposure from those magazines because probably their audience is a bit like not the right one for me but yeah now now it's so different and it changes so quickly and the market grows so quickly so yeah now, now i start to do this again <laughs> mm -hmm. um and going back to um, yeah, we mentioned at the start earlier on as well about you said about um, we said about like, your style and some of the early stuff. Um, so yeah, I, um, I sit like going through some of your other work, and I could see that kind of development. It's it was like a bit um, there was a lot. I kind of noticed there's a lot more lots and lots of the wedding stuff, and it's kind of like some of the images a lot bit lot softer and a bit crazy looking all that. And then with the into the kind of how, you, how your style developed was was that a progression how so yeah so how did that kind of progression happen i think you mentioned about when you kind of came over to like sheffield and was working with like the sort of models and that here is mm -hmm. that kind of what kind of triggered that difference in the style do you reckon i think so yeah as i mentioned at the same time when i changed like my style from portrait shootings to fashion photography it happened in sheffield and in sheffield my first team happened so it's kind of like happened all together and I think this dramatically changed the way my images definitely like, I got really many messages from my like friends colleagues photographers like, oh wow you you did such a jump <laughs> so yeah that's that's team and changing the style yeah it challenge got into opportunity I, I put it this way because at first I felt really 
frustrated and sad that I was like, my services are not needed here <laughs> because no one really needs it. At some point I was literally offering photo shoots for free, not to models, but just to normal people. And everyone was like, yeah, when we have wedding, we'll call you. And I'm like, I'm not shooting weddings. It's just portraits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, probably I don't need portraits. So it was really, really sad at the beginning. But yeah, that that triggered the change. <laughs> yeah, I think like I say, once, once you get a few of those and then more of them come in and you can see it in the work and then people can see that in your work as well. They yeah. they, they go to you for that and they, they can see that's what you're shooting. So I think it's just the first kind of trying to get that out there and get those first shoots in really. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, absolutely. and then, so when did the um, when did the beauty cut work come in? Let's say that again. Um, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just, just do the connection. Oh, yeah, it keeps going. Um, so yeah, the beauty work. When did that? When did that kind of progress? When did that come through? Can you hear me? The, the beauty, the beauty photography. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay, well, so I just heard the second part of the question. Oh, yeah, no, so, yeah. So when, when did the beauty beauty work come in, really? Yeah. Um, I do the year, <laughs> but I think, no, actually, I think I know. So I don't remember the year, but it was kind of recently. It's when I first bought myself a flashlight for, like, for home using, and, mm -hmm. yeah. When I got the flashlight, I was like, it's it's really hard to shoot like proper full body shots at home, but it's quite easy to do beauty at home. And you don't need like to hire a studio for that. No really extra expenses. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's the, the purchase of flashlight. <laughs> it was yeah. the start of my beauty photography because it was so convenient to organize everything at home. You know, no one is like really rushing because we don't have to leave like the studio you know exactly in six hours or how many hours you have like for, for how many hours you have rented it but you're really chilled i just turn on really nice music i prepare some food and i put together a really nice team and we just literally enjoy it mm -hmm. and yeah since i don't have like I, I didn't have in sheffield that much space for uh full body shots so i just restricted to beauty shots at home but then the rest was like in studio or outdoors. But yeah, and I, I believe probably it was like around winter, springtime. So the weather wasn't really good. And that's why at some point I maybe focused slightly more on beauty shootings because at home you can organize it like all the time. You don't really depend on the weather. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's, that's how it happened. <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, I think that's one, especially in England as well, it's one thing, the weather is so unpredictable. So um, it can be if you've got, yeah, like sort of studio, like working in the studio a lot, it's, at least you've got control over that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, I mean, that leads us to the fourth image as well, which is the, the beauty image. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so um, ha yeah, so how did, how did you like this? This was a, in studio then? This was at home. Actually, oh, no. okay, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. So yeah, so how did you set this? So it's the one we've got the, the pink background. So how did you how did you set up everything this for the lighting? Oh, can you hear me? It keeps it's cutting again. Oh, can you it's hear me right, now? Yeah, it's, it just keeps cutting out every now and again. It's fine. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. It might be a bit delayed. So yeah, basically, yeah. this setup is really simple. Uh, okay, that's fine. So um, I just bought a couple of A A one format papers, different colors, and yeah, it's basically all you need <laughs> in terms of the backdrops. And then I just used my flashlight. I bought umbrella to like slightly diffuse the light because it's not really convenient to hold a like proper soft box at home, but umbrella is so like, so, so small. So it's like the, the best thing to, for, for shooting at home. And yeah, it's just, it's just umbrella and the lighting in front of the model behind me. And this, on the back, that's all. Yeah, and just maybe reflect underneath the face, that's all. And 
do you have um for your beauty work do you have kind of a go-to lighting setup is it like kind of a specific lighting setup um, you're not using i have one that i know will definitely work but what i try to do is i try to play with the light and see what else i can do so uh, otherwise all the shoot uh, all the shots will look similar mm -hmm. and i i just want to be more flexible with the light still like learning the lighting because i was uh, shooting of the time and i would light because i like i don't know how it works i just don't get it but yeah now since i have it at home i just yeah try to do if you like guaranteed shoots uh sh sh like it's i'm the models just from any words and how it will work so I, i'm still into like looking for the right lighting setup. I have one, but I want to find more options mm -hmm. <laughs> with one light. Yeah. Um, how do you find it? Um, so shooting beauty and stuff, how do you find that differs compared to shooting like some of your com commercial like portfolio stuff? Um, is it, do you find it, is it a bit more kind of relaxing? Is it, um, is it does it take longer to, again, like with the kind of retouch and all that sort of stuff as well? How does it differ really from the commercial stuff? Yeah, mm, well, it's definitely way, way, way longer in terms of retouching because in most cases, if it's not a studio shoot, but an, an outdoor shoot, sometimes color correction is all you need. If everything looks fine, like if I had a proper team who prepared the perfect model with like, you know, stylic makeup and everything, sometimes I even like don't retouch unless there is like some imperfections that I, that I really need to retouch. but. In most cases it's just color correction and for beauty obviously even if the skin is just super super like flawless still you need to do some to make it out a bit more so yeah retouching is definitely like long process for beauty but in terms of shooting probably not because it's you have just your face sometimes stay in the in the, like in, the in, in the shot and yeah I, usually I spend probably like 10 to 15 minutes for one look we're done because otherwise I have like thousands of <laughs> so I, I'd say probably shooting beauty is quicker but retouching is longer mm -hmm. um and we'll do we'll do one it keeps kind of cutting a little bit but um we've got through most of it i'll just ask oh, there's one more um just yeah just going forward with uh future shoots is there, are there any um concepts or themes that you want to try in future that you've got kind of planned yeah i like, definitely want to do one shooting i um don't remember what the product was that but i remember it was a dior campaign the girls in flowers, water, some some greenery, also quite feminine, soft and just blurry maybe. Um, yeah, that's what I really want to do, but understand that for this I would need a bigger team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's what I'm currently doing. So I'm just trying to work with different creatives, just just to put together that team. Mm -hmm. um, before we do that, my dream shooting, I just want to make sure that on that shooting, that we are all on the same page, because sometimes it still like happens during the shooting. Everyone can be super lovely, all good, but we have slightly different vision. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it really, like it, it doesn't. So I just, yeah, for that shooting, I just want to make sure everything is just perfect everyone wants this kind of sh like shoot sh shooting in their portfolio so yeah it's probably it will take time mm -hmm. to to find that team but yeah i'm really excited about it and i have this idea so hopefully <laughs> well yeah they're the, the ones it's yeah like you say it takes a lot of planning and uh, getting the right team getting a lot of team but it's yes definitely, when it when it comes together and it's it's definitely worth it and it's um yeah, yeah, they're, yeah they're the kind of like yeah. shoots yeah well, um, uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it there because it is it does keep cutting quite a lot. 
Um, and so obviously the connection's not been at the best, but we've got through, we've got through it all anyway. We've got a lot, lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you for taking out the time and your evening to sort of talk with us. Um, yeah, thank you for calling me again. <laughs> No, it's great, and um, it was a pleasure. And like we say, like we loved the the images that like, you submitted, the one for the cover as well. We like we loved that, so we're like really happy to use it. Um, but yeah, and um, and best of luck in London. Um, with with so work much. and everything as well. I'm sure it'll yeah, I'm sure it'll go well. It'll be great. Thank you so so much, honestly. Thank you so much. <laughs> great. Thanks, Donna. Bye. Thank you. Have a lovely evening. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.